A very warm welcome to the ministry of the good word of God. First of all, let us give thanks unto the Lord for sending rain upon the land. Uh, ever since I arrived, I hear quite dry and waiting for rain. So have been praying that the God of creation have mercy upon this land and water the earth. And so we praise God. Now let us turn to the scripture. The world which is characterized by darkness and evil. And the world where our Lord was rejected, despised and crucified. Amidst of this world, the Lord has a place among his dear people, whom he redeemed. And in that very place, he has his voice, a place of divine communication. We live in a day when we see the vision for this place is lost among God's people. And this place is become secondary when it must be on the top of our heart, the dwelling place of God. Those disciples who heard John the Baptist recorded in John chapter 1, verse number 34 to 39. They heard John's pointing them to the Lamb of God. And they left John and they began to follow our Lord Jesus Christ. All because they want to know where the Lord dwells. And so we have them asking in chapter 1 of John Gospel, verse number 38 and 39, Rabbi, where dwellest thou? And then we have the royal word of grace, come and see. And they came and abode with him that day, not night, where he is. There is no place for darkness. It is day. So amidst of darkness and evil outside, we come and dwell in the light of his indwelling presence. And it is always sunrise with the soul that is in communion with the Lord in his place. Young people, the safest place on this earth is the church, the dwelling place of God, because the Lord is here. The Lord is here. We will conclude with that thought on Thursday, God willing, the very praise with which the book of Ezekiel end, the Lord is there. The Lord is there. In the book of Ezekiel chapter number 10 and 11, the glory departed. And we find in chapter number 43 of Ezekiel, Behold, the glory of God in the house of God. 
and the book end with that very thought the lord is there and so will be in millennium so this is the safest place where we have the presence of the law outside is danger because the devil is there the god of this world the adversary the devil and from that world it did please the lord to take you and me acts chapter 15 verse number 14 the present divine program of god visiting gentiles and taking out of them a people for his name his name the book of zachariah chapter 40 verse number 9 the lord shall be king over all the earth and in that day there shall be one lord and his name one his name one and so in millennium that name will be honored and we find the lord is there and so from the danger outside from the darkness outside the lord took us out all because of his affectionate visitation and having taken us out for his name he gathered us together unto him so this evening i am concerned to look at the pattern the pattern of the house of god so at the outset we will read please turn with me to the book of exodus book of exodus chapter 15 chapter 15 and verse number 8 and 9 and verse number 8 and 9 and let them make me a sanctuary that i may dwell among them according to all that i show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instrument thereof even so shall he make it last verse verse number 40 the same chapter and look that thou make them after their pattern which was showed thee in the mount the next chapter verse number 30 chapter 26 verse 30 and thou shall rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof which was showed thee in the mount next chapter 27 27 verse number 8 verse number 8 hollow with boards shall thou make it as it was showed thee in the mount so shall they make it one verse from the book of ezekiel please book of ezekiel chapter 43 the book of ezekiel chapter 43 and verse number 10 verse number 
the beginning part and the later part of verse 10 thou son of man show the house to the house of israel and later part let them measure the pattern let them measure the pattern so we have here a book where we can measure the pattern of the house of God. And so we find in this book, after redemption in chapter 12, we have the next thing is a song, the song of redemption in chapter 15. And then verse number two and three, where people say, let us make a habitation for God. The initiative come from the heart of God's people, but they forgot all about. And we come to chapter 25. The initiative come from the heart of God. You see? Let them make me a sanctuary. So he expect from his team a sanctuary. And he want them to build. In contrast, in the New Testament, our Lord himself built. Chapter 16, of Matthew, verse number 18, I will build my house. The head is gaze shall not prevail against it. So in the Old Testament, the redeemed people of God are responsible to make a sanctuary. Now, in the New Testament, in contrast, our Lord himself built. And then when you look at the Leviticus order, people are responsible to bring the offering and bring the animal for sacrifice, right? In the New Testament, we are not fit to bring the Lord and his wondrous grace made divine provision of sacrifice in his beloved son. You see? And then we come into its blessing where we are made kings and priests and we come together as an assembly, exercise our priesthood on the ground of that one physical sacrifice what our Lord offered upon the cross. We offer spiritual sacrifice. So you see the contrast between old and new. But we can compare. So let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Them. Who are they? He can't dwell among anybody. He can only dwell among those whom he redeemed. And so in the New Testament, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Matthew Gospel, chapter 18, verse 20. And so Acts chapter 15, verse 14, we see the visitation of God taking out a people, a people exclusively set upon for his name. Among such people, he dwell, he dwell. And so, beloved, the dwelling place belongeth unto him. And he gives the pattern. So when you look at the dwelling place, 
the tabernacle in the book of Exodus. You see chapter 25 until chapter 40, long 16 chapters contributed to the description and the construction of tabernacle. So precious, so precious. Such long section of a book is given to the instruction and the description in detail and the construction in detail, yet we do not find a single reference to the musical instrument. You see, no musical instrument is given in the dwelling place of God. And then we find when you come to chapter number 39, not less than 10 times you read the total obedience of Moses to the instruction given in scripture for building the tabernacle. As the Lord commanded, as the Lord commanded, so did he, so did he. No compromise. Nothing he added, neither he removed. Because he was very sure. We read from chapter 25, verse number 40. So shall he make it. So we cannot add, we cannot remove. The pattern is given. And so he did. Did the Lord honor him? Did the Lord or the Lord is pleased with what he built? Yes, we read in chapter 40, verse number 33 and 34. And uh, verse number 33, so Moses finished the work. And then we read verse number 34 and 35, the glory of the Lord fell in the tabernacle. The Lord honored. The Lord honored. So keep that in mind. And now come to the temple. We have in First Chronicle, chapter number 28 and verse number 11, you have a father, you have a son, David and Solomon. And David handed over the pattern to his son. Where did David receive? Drop your eye down in that chapter number 28, verse number 19, 18 and 19. David received in writing from God the pattern of the house of God. You see, what did Solomon do? You see, the young man, oh, let me add. Let me bring something more. Or let me remove something. My father is an old man. I am the king. Let me add no. We read in 2 Chronicle. Chapter 3. Verse 1. Since Solomon began to build the house of God. And we read Moses finished the work. So 2 Chronicle. Chapter 5. Verse number one, so Solomon finished the work of the house of God. Did the Lord honor the father and the son? Is the Lord pleased with the building of the house of God? Yes, he is. How do we know? Second Chronicle chapter number five, verse number 14. 
write down verse number 14 the glory of the lord fell in the house of god is not great the lord honor the father and the son back in the book of genesis chapter number 80 verse number 90 what the lord said about a father father abraham i know him i know him he was sure about abraham he will command his children after him and teach the household the ways of god you see god was very sure of father abraham so father and the son so what we do we the parents we the elders take the blue print from the scripture as the as it is and hand over to our darling children the house of god produces the man of god back in the book of first samuel chapter number 1 and verse number 90 we have an altar in the house of elkana the priest and his wife hana they rose up early in the morning and worship the lord worship the lord that point of time in that verse the lord remembered hana the lord remembered hana and was given shamuel this is the child i prayed for you see and he worshiped the lord chapters 2 and 3 where we have him in the dwelling place of god in the dwelling place of god when there was no open vision when the word of god was so precious this young child samuel could hear the voice of god the voice of god oh he could say master speak thy servant heareth and we have him in the dwelling place of god ministering unto the lord ministering before the lord the whole israel identify the presence of the lord was with shamuel come to the book of jeremiah chapter number 15 verse number 1 we read shamuel stood before the lord shamuel stood before the lord he was among aaron and moses and david who called upon the name of the lord and the lord answered them and samuel could hear the voice of god he enjoyed the presence of the lord in the dwelling place and he could hear the voice of god in contrast to eli's children who knew not the lord you see what was the result what was the result the result we read in first samuel chapter 9 verse number 6 how samuel was known an honorable man and a man of god an honorable man and a man of god the house of god produces the man of god and the man of god knows 
the mind of god as reveal in god's word no wonder we read in the epistle first timothy chapter number 6 verse number 11 only once in the new testament where timothy address where paul address young timothy oh thou man of god one who was of good report who made steady progress in divine things is identified as man of god and so how come we read in second timothy chapter 3 verse number 15 oh thou timothy continue in those thing which thou hast learned from thy childhood at the holy scripture holy scripture and their holy scripture refers to old testament and verse number 16 all scripture refers to old and new and so we find beloved in the old testament in the new testament we have children young people well known as the man of god characterized by godliness characterized by fear of god who lived in reverential awe of him and walked in godly fear in obedience to the voice of god the word of god who brought glory to the lord what a place where we have come today the dwelling place of god thought comes to me from the book of exodus chapter number 33 verse number 11 another young man joshua joshua did not depart from tabernacle how come oh because of musical instrument because of modern song because of all new idea no no beloved how come he did not depart his master moses departed but young man joshua still there he valued that place he valued that place and he knew this is the place where was the presence of the lord the place of divine presence of the true living god he valued that place because he knew this is the place where god communicated with his master moses it's a place of divine communication he valued that place how come because he knew this is the place where the glory of god fell we valued that place and that place was on the top of his heart he did not depart from that tabernacle he continued he wanted to enjoy the presence of the lord he want to hear the voice of god oh he want to witness and see the glory of god where in tabernacle the young man and today we hear oh the old people they will consider they will like the gathering like this oh young people need something more or oh, new age church and what not they have people church people church the lord is outside the lord is outside but we find in the scripture here i tell you my experience after my 10th year in the school i was 15 years 15 years old i was catholic i went to the bishop house in the morning after mass i was given permission to stand come before him reverend bishop joseph kundukula is no more now i went and i asked bishop give me a job in bishop house where bishop say the mass something very precious i am catholic i go to my church every day half past 5 in the morning and evening again kneeling down so if i get a job in bishop house where bishop is saying mass according to us that is church now i know it is full of idolatry at that time different i said i am willing to sweep and sop and clean the toilet 
that's enough for me because it is church god's house i am 15 years old i am the eldest son to my parents for me that job is greatest job in the world sweeping sobbing cleaning the church and cleaning the toilet i value that place but that is religion the lord is not there full of darkness and idolatry but we who know the true and living god how do we value the dwelling place of god do we really long to come out of seven days monday to saturday do we pray every day lord give us wonderful lord's day morning gathering together do we pray that must be the subject of our prayer give us wonderful blessed lord's day morning gathering and to come around and to be seated with the lord at the table in fellowship you see do we have that longing turn with me to the book of psalm psalm number 84 verse number 1 and 2 how amiable how beautiful how dearly beloved is the dwelling place of lord of host how beautiful how dearly beloved how amiable are the tabernacle of lord of host my flesh my heart my soul crying out longing for the courts of the living god and they that dwell in the house of the lord shall be blessed and they still praise thee you see beloved the aspiration of some is is satisfied look at their oh how amiable we find not less than nine time mentioned in the scripture and translated beloved dearly beloved lovely what the dwelling place of the lord of host oh it is better for me to be a door keeper in the house of god in the courts of the living god and samuel lay until the early morning we have him being the door keeper of the house of god and so my heart affectionately my soul spiritually my flesh physically physically affectionately spiritually longing crying out for the dwelling place of god do we have such a longing such a longing for the house of god you see this is the place where god meet with us where god meet with us in the days of nehemiah 70 years captivity in babylon 70 years no gathering together and when you study that book we find when we come to chapter number 8 until chapter 7 no gathering together why the wall was not built separation was not maintained but then when it is done we find them with a longing heart not some all the people gather themselves together as one man such a tremendous unity in the gathering together men and women and children all who could understand and their ears were open to the words of the lord there was longing Psalm number one hundred twenty-two, verse number two: Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, chosen place. Don't we read in the book of uh, Second Chronicle, chapter number six, verse number five and six? 
since the day i brought you out of egypt i haven't chosen any place among the tribe of israel but jerusalem but jerusalem why that my name might be there you see my name might be there whatever the condition of jerusalem might be today in the day of his glory and of ezekiel the lord is there the capital city of his administration jerusalem from where he will administrate his kingdom and so we have him then what happened psalm number 29 verse number 9 in his temple that every bit speak of his glory everything speak of his glory will come to glory one of these days and so we find the lord is here he is waiting and he meet with us he meet with us are we longing are we longing to come oh look at young man joshua he did not depart from the tabernacle look at all women in the gospel of luke chapter 2 verse number 37 and 38 godly anna did not depart from the temple she was fasting and praying and serving the lord speaking to all in israel the redemption all about the lord jesus christ you see so old and the young dwelling in the dwelling place of god oh beloved how about a longing for this place are we truly longing to come people like you and me be chosen we read in the book of psalm 65 verse number 4 Psalm 65, verse number four: Blessed is the man whom thou chosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts, and shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy holy temple. Here we have satisfaction, the blessing of the house. we read in psalm numbers 36 psalm number 36 and verse number 8 they shall be abundantly satisfied they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fat fatness of thy house and he shall make us to drink of the rivers of water the fatness and the water and the blessing in the dwelling place of god the fatness take us to the book of leviticus bring before us the offering the rich part of animal what is consumed by fire through which sweet fragrant ascend to the throne of god the preciousness the loveliness the excellencies of the person of the lord jesus christ with which we adore the house of god a heart be full a basket be full we come on the lord's day from the depth of our heart arise spontaneously those words of appreciation and so david says in psalm 27 verse number 4 one thing have i desired of the lord that will i seek after to dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life and to behold thy beauty thy glory and inquire in thy temple you see behold thy beauty thy glory thy splendor 
thy excellencies thy loveliness where in the house of the lord that is what he desired so when the saints come together with the preparation and offer the spiritual sacrifice of praise uh, appreciation to the loveliness the excellencies the virtues the suffering and the glory of our lord jesus christ and with which we beautify the house of god and the place will be filled with the glory of the lord you got that you see and so beloved this is what god expect from us this is what god expect from our gathering together no place like this where we have the dwelling place and the place is linked with the heaven the heaven is open to this place the angels are beholding the eyes of the lord attended unto and so angel looks upon first corinthian chapter 11 verse number 10 the angel is interested in a gathering together and you see there is no place in the world like this which is linked to heaven and the heaven and the earth is linked together and sweet fragrance is ascending to the throne of god and heaven rejoices oh one thing that very one thing is what i desire to dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life not few days all the days of my life yes the lord is coming for this very place the lord is coming for the church not for anything if at all the lord has anything on this earth today that is his church which is his purchased possession belongeth unto him by the redemptive blessing or by redemption we belongeth unto him we are purchased position and he is going to come for it he is going to come for it and this is going to be presented unto him as glorious church without any wrinkle any spot you see ephesians chapter 5 verse number 26 and 27 glorious church whatever the state may be today but that very moment when he will descend in the mid air we will be raptured and gathered together unto him as glorious church without any wrinkle and spot where we can see the glory of church could you please turn with me to the book of song of solomon chapter number 6 and verse number 10 Song of Solomon, chapter six, verse number ten. Who is she that looketh as morning, that looketh as fair moon, looketh as clear sun, like strong armies? Who is she? Looketh as morning. The night is far spent. the darkness is over hey, church is coming out of darkness in this world like fresh morning with all beauty with all loveliness and beautiful and fair like the moon like the moon and clear as the sun without any wrinkle or any spot like strong armies when we shall come with him chapter 19 or revelation and so we shall be presented unto him as glorious church oh beloved what will it be to dwell above with the lord of glory reign you see 
the beauty and the glory of church song of solomon chapter 6 verse number 10 and so that is what we find in the book of uh, revelation chapter 21 verse 10 and 11 there we read he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me that holy city eh jerusalem descending out of heaven from god and verse number 11 having the glory of god you see revelation chapter 21 verse number 10 having the glory of god now the world do not identify us but in the day of his glory when we will come along with our lord we will descend from heaven with the glory of god the world hasn't seen when we were ascended up as glorious church without any wrinkle or any spot but now the world will see us oh with the glory of god with the glory of god you see and so beloved that glory of god the church with all glory will be hanging from heaven as sight like city we are heavenly people the people of israel known as earthly people yeah and but you see we are different we are different and so when we are taken out of this world for his name week after week we come together gather unto his name and we have him in fellowship with the lord and when we experience beloved that glory must be reflected in us and through us and the world should see when we go out well these people are different these people are different look at the way they walk look at the way they dress up look at the words they speak they are different who are they who are they acts chapter 11 verse number 26 they are christian they are christian the heathen people of antioch identified them and the very first time the disciple were called christian one in whom christ lives and the one who dwells in christ and lead christ centered christian life different and so we become the epistle the fifth gospel and the world read us and see christ in us christ in us so with this purpose god has taken us out of this world for his name and he is so pleased to dwell among us and this is something not of earthly but of divine divine in its origin originated in the heart of god way back in eternity and in creation god always sought to have fellowship with his people and so we have in chapter number 3 of genesis verse number 8 we have been coming down in the cool of the day walking seeking fellowship with adam and eve but we find the sin enter that is broken but ultimately it will be accomplished and so we read in chapter uh, 21 of uh, revelation verse number 3 the tabernacle of god is with man they shall be his people he shall be their god he shall dwell among them the ultimate purpose of god without any shadow of doubt will be accomplished in eternity 
forever with the Lord, dwelling together, dwelling together. But we have him coming down and dwelled among us and he beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, but we have him rejected, despised and crucified. But in the midst of that world, we have him visiting and taking us. And then one by one, he takes and he himself build. He himself build. And so we will see more of it from different perspective as the Lord needs. Make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. The Lord is so pleased to dwell among us. He is in our midst where we have come together. May the Lord bless this words to your heart. Shall we pray? Hallelujah, Heavenly Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We draw nigh unto thee in thanksgiving giving thanks for the gift of thy well-beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the heaven's beloved one, the Father's delight, the one in whom our Father is well-pleased, and the one in response did everything those pleased the Father, he is the one who dwell in our midst, unto whom we are gathered together. And we want to see more of our Lord. We want to see more of thy dwelling place. Will thou satisfy our longing heart? In thy will continue to bring us and gather us together and speak to our heart like what thou hast done this evening. We appreciate thy visitation in our midst this evening and speaking to our heart. O oh, we thank thee, bless thy word and make it fruitful in our life to the praise of thy glory. Take us safely back home, giving thanks and waiting in expectation of thy coming. We ask in the name and for the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May we rise to sing together in conclusion, hymn number 